Christmas. Oh, Easter seals today. Hi, thank you for joining us today. I'm Carol Galt and I'll be your host for Easter Seals today. And with us today, we also have Chuck Walter, the board chair of Easter Seals West Kentucky. And we have Danny Carroll, the um, president and CEO of Easter Seals West Kentucky. So thank you all for being here with us today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to have you. Good to be here. So let's just um, start today, Chuck, and let's talk just a little bit about um, your experience with Easter Seals and, and okay your part with the board. Well, sure. Um, my experience with the Easter Seals is, is a family experience. Uh, my wife and I uh, have a son who's now 20, going to be 21 very soon, uh, who was a client, a consumer at Easter Seals when he was very young, uh, about three years old, had a diagnosis of autism, uh, and uh, was a client of Easter Seals back in the very early 1990s and now after going through public school is is back as a consumer with adult day services uh, and with the help of Easter Seals has a very very good quality of life uh, and with his involvement and participation in Easter Seals uh, I was given an opportunity to be on the board uh, back in 1995 and I've served on the board since that time I've had a couple of rounds as, as board chair for better or for worse, and for whatever reasons that were present at the time, I, that uh, that uh, privilege uh, was given to me, and, uh, and it's what I'm doing right now with the board, and uh, have seen a lot of changes, um, some different CEOs. Uh, Mr. Richard Brown was CEO when I first uh, got on the board, and uh, we've been through uh, two or three others, and now have uh, are privileged and blessed to have Mr. Carroll as our CEO, and have uh, gone from the one facility at Mildred Street to the new campus, the new CDC, uh, off of Joe Clifton and Park Avenue, that area, and uh, renovations of the uh, old Mildred Street location into adult uh, day fair and our adult uh, services center. So a lot of, lot of good changes over the years. There have been a lot of good changes. Mm -hmm. And since you just mentioned da Danny, I'm going to go ahead and ask <coughs> Danny as well, why don't you just give us a little history about your affiliation and what you did previously, and then I'm going to get back to some of the board questions. So, Well, the affiliation with me really wasn't directly with Easter Seals, but more the, uh, the services provided. <clears throat> I spent 24 years with the Paducah Police Department, and as retirement was growing near, uh, looking for a new career, uh, I learned about the position at Easter Seals, and my wife and I have a daughter who is 11 who has cerebral palsy, and uh, we have seen firsthand the difference uh, that, that the services like we offer at Easter Seals makes in a child's life. Uh, through therapies, uh, we didn't know if she would ever walk or talk when she was first diagnosed, and uh, you know, we started the therapies uh, more home-based and through school, but uh, uh, you know, and now she dances and sings. So uh, that's, that's really the connection that I had. And you know, when I, through the interview process, and, and you know, I think that's one of the, the advantages I had going into that process was having a good understanding of what our families go through uh, to a certain extent. And, uh, you know, it kind of helps me to connect with, with what we do at Easter Seals. And uh, my daughter does attend now on, on Friday after school. The program's there. And, and she has designated herself my secretary. So uh, I have seen her uh, office, uh, yes. 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 We, we have a good time with that, and she loves it there. And, uh, you know, the board was uh, uh, good enough to give me the opportunity for the position. And, uh, you know, so just uh, a lot of great things that we do there. And it, it's just been, uh, it's been a great experience so far. Well, since you both have family experiences with Easter Seals and, and you're both in leadership roles with the organization, what um, struck you about, what struck you the most, I guess, is my question about the services that Easter Seals provided. And, and I'll start with you, Danny, first, and then I'll... For me, it was the way that uh, the center had adapted in, in the Child Development Center. Uh, many years ago, there came a time when, when kids with special needs were integrated into the school system. So a lot of the kids that we had at Easter Seals back many years ago uh, now attend school. Uh, so in order for, for Easter Seals to remain viable and still provide services for the younger age kids, mm -hmm. uh, the board made a decision to uh, develop the Child Development Center. and. Uh, 
you know, we still have kids at the center with special needs. Uh, we try to maintain about a 70-30 ratio uh, with the, uh, the special needs to typically developing kids. So uh, uh, they're still able, we're still able to provide those services that we needed to. We're able to remain financially stable uh, through income with the child, uh, the daycare portion, and we still provide services there through the therapies that come in. We have a partnership with Hampton Physical Therapy and we also have a partnership with Western Baptist that they, they come in and provide our therapies there at the center. So as far as the Child Development Center, it's, it's the way that the organization adapted to changing times and still remains viable. We still serve a population that we were meant to serve and we, we have also increased uh, to serve the typically developing children. So uh, bringing the two together is great and it goes along with uh, I think the philosophy that with the school system with special needs kids being in the schools we do that at our center also. Um, with the, uh, the adult center I, I was really impressed by the work that was done to, uh, to mainstream the individuals that we serve in the community. Uh, you know at one point in society uh, needs uh, the adults with special needs, uh, developmentally delayed, developmentally challenged, they were more isolated. Mm -hmm. And we don't do that anymore. Everything we do is on the basis that we we're encouraging our individuals to be part of the community and not be isolated. So if it's through uh, uh, life skills training that we do or through trips that we take, uh, day trips within the city, uh, through the various programs that we have, employment services, it's encouraging uh, them to be productive members of the community and that that's I guess that's what struck me the most with our adult center. And Chuck and I were having that conversation earlier talking about um, Calvert City, a trip I, I believe they were taking to yes. Calvert City and a local restaurant as well that um, well, sure. is all, all the same. Well they they have lots of different opportunities, uh, lots of different projects uh, the art project, the art uh, program that Easter Seal has now mm -hmm. uh, is, is a real blessing. Um, as far as getting uh, skills, identifying skills and talents that uh, these consumers have that you might not expect, uh, that you know, the community may not stop and consider that while these people have challenges, they still have talents, they have abilities that you know, that all of us have. And it's just a matter of finding a way to get that talent expressed, to get it out. The art program is wonderful for that. My son participates in it. Uh, he was fortunate enough to, to have a very nice entry in the ceramics uh, portion of the most recent uh, art show, art auction uh, festivities that we had. Um, and, and that's true for so many of the consumers, that they have an opportunity to express themselves. Uh, they have talent shows. Uh, there's a day fair side uh, where people with, with special needs go and have something to do during the day. So many families have, you know, their single parents, the single parent works, or both parents are at home, but both parents work, and you've got uh, a, a child who has gone through the public school system or what have you. Now they have to have their niche, now that they're young adults and, and growing older and what have you, there needs to be that service. That's the situation with my family. We have to have something for our son to do. He does get job training. Uh, we're optimistic that there can be some job placement for him. Mm -hmm. Easter Seals has done that for a number of individuals. Besides the job training, there is something for him to do, whether it's a field trip whether it's a talent show, whether it's a guy's day out. Ben uh, recently did a pumpkin, a jack-o'-lantern, and anyone who knows my son would not be surprised that he selected Homer Simpson uh, to be his uh, jack-o'-lantern uh, model. And I picked him up one day, uh, the teachers there showed me the, the jack-o'-lantern, and it's what I expected. It's a perfect replica of one of his cartoon heroes. and. He's happy doing that. Uh, it's not just something for him to do, it's something for him to experience, it's something for him to use to grow and not sit at home. Right, right. And, and that's so valuable. Uh, and I've said it before and I can't say it enough, this community, uh, this town, this county, this whole region is so good to the Easter Seals mission 
um, people can't be thanked enough. And, and the staff is just wonderful in those regards. And just real quickly, let's talk about how people come to serve our area and, and the Easter Seals came into being. Okay. Um, let's do a little history lesson on that real well, quickly, if you don't mind. It's, it's a long history. Uh, in the 1930s, 1934, I think the Crippled Children's Center was founded. It was sponsored by the Charity League. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in 1952, there was the uh, McCracken County Cerebral Palsy Center. That was the uh, uh, work of the Lions Club. And those two groups, uh, through Easter Seals, combined services to be Easter Seals West Kentucky, beginning in 1954. Those two charitable organizations, Charity League and Lions Club, continue uh, with their support, invaluable support, uh, to Easter Seals West Kentucky. Couldn't do it without them. Um, and in essence, what you have is programs for children, programs for adults. Um, anyone who's familiar with this community knows the telethon, knows the various events that uh, the Charity League sponsors. Uh, I'm sure Easter Seals has touched just about everybody around here in some form or another, whether somebody's been a donor, a participant, a fundraiser, a volunteer, had a family member, uh, received services at the center, or has had a family member or a friend work at the center, contribute at the center. I think that's probably true. My first affiliation was through the Charity League, and, and since that time, I've known lots of people sure. who have been affiliated in some shape, form, or fashion. Sure. So we'll talk about that more in the next segment, but right now I think we're going to take a break from a word from Easter Seals, and we'll be right back with you. So stay tuned. My name is Diana Davenport and I'm the Art Director for the Easter Seals Adult Services Art Program. And we would just want to take a moment to update everyone on how well the 5th Annual Art Celebration went off. Well, we raised over $10,000 for our Adult Services Program through the event. And I would like to say a special thank you to our presenting sponsor, Independence Bank, and the staff who helped with the event. Of course, we couldn't have pulled it off without local businesses donating food and items for our live and silent auction as well. I would like to introduce a very special individual. He's our featured artist for this year. He's a very talented and gifted artist, Tamel Lee. Thank you, 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 and a very special thank you to God. Uh, I, we sit in, in, in the pool off without, without y'all. And, um, How, how did that make you feel when you found out that you were chosen as the featured artist for the art celebration? Well, it, it, it was a feeling I can't you know, as, 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 as describe, but, uh, but um, uh, I would be honored to be in the future artist.
Thank you for coming back with us again. Um, we were just before the break discussing the Charity League and the Lions Club and the Telethon. And let's just talk a little bit about um, how Easter Seals is funded and the area that Easter Seals serves. And I'd like for you to talk about that as president and CEO and then Chuck as well. Let's talk about it from a volunteer perspective um, and the services that are provided that way too, if you, you okay. all would. Um, at the current time, we're serving a total um, of about 600 people in all of our programs. So, uh, you know, it's obvious that Easter Seals has grown and, and uh, very important to the community as far as the numbers of the people that we serve. We're serving 19 counties in West Kentucky. We also reach into Southern Illinois. We have some individuals that come to our center from Southern Illinois. And uh, we also provide services as needed in Southeast Missouri. Uh, some of the programs we had to offer, we've discussed a little bit. We have the inclusive child care at our child development center, the therapy services that we have there. And I should also mention that we have a partnership with Early Head Start out of Murray. Uh, that's a service where it's uh, to those who are income eligible to provide uh, child care services and other services at our center. And that's age birth through three, I believe. And we keep 10 slots available for that program. So a very successful partnership and we're glad to be associated with the, uh, with the Early Head Start program. Uh, at our adult services, and, and Chuck talked a little bit about that with our adult day training program. And that's, that's a program where our individuals that are perhaps more mobile and uh, uh, we do a lot more uh, outings with them and there's more life skills training. Uh, we do social skills training with them, cooking classes, uh, just a wide gamut of programs we do with that group. Uh, several in that group are employed out in the community mm -hmm. uh, with our employment program. Mm -hmm. And uh, as part of that, we also have a program, it's Community Living Supports Program, CLS. And this is a one-on-one -on -one based program where we have uh, uh, individuals who we have trained, they come into the center, they go out with the, the individuals at the center on a one-on-one -on -one basis throughout in the community, uh, learning real life things and, and real life entertainment. If, if for instance, you have one of the individuals who likes football, then uh, they may hook them up with, uh, you know, someone from the community who enjoys football. They go to football games together. Uh, and then they learn, uh, they have a plan where they're learning some life skills as part of that also. Very successful, one of the fastest growing programs that we have and our individuals love it. They love the one-on-one -on -one contact. Um, the adult daycare that we have that Chuck talked about, uh, more of a medical-based model. We have uh, registered nurses there and uh, it's, it's more constant care throughout the day and it's in a separate part of our building. We also do outings with this group also. They'll go shopping, uh, they'll go out to the mall and walk, or they might push them around in the wheelchairs, whatever the case might be, but a lot of activities with that group, group also. We have case management at the center uh, for various clients. We have an adult foster care program where we have, we hook individuals up with various families where the individuals actually go and live with the families. And it's, it's part of uh, one of the programs that we have that's very successful. A respite program just to give some families a break. The art program that Chuck talked about and that continues to grow and be a huge success. We're mm -hmm. very proud of that. Employment services which extends from the individuals that we serve at the center uh, out in the community, there are sometimes uh, individuals who have been in bad car wrecks that have had brain injuries, whatever the case might be. We work with them and we also work with just someone that's looking for a job, an adult that's looking for a job. So our employment services have really expanded out in the community and we serve quite a few folks. Uh, we have a school to work program uh, in the school system where uh, in the Crack County schools where juniors and seniors work with our, our placement specialists, teaching them job skills, teaching them about interviews, and then actually help them find employment out in the community. So that's a very successful relationship too. With so many of those programs, I know it takes a lot of money to fund all of that. We've discussed the budget previously before, just you and I having a conversation, and I had no idea the mm -hmm. amount of dollars that it took to fund um, it's just some, not something I had really stopped to think about. And Chuck, if you would, it, let's talk about the volunteers sure. that are on the board and what part they play in the funding and what kind of dollars okay. it takes to make this operation go. Well, people know about the telethon. Quite a few people know about the uh, benefits and the fundraising that the Charity League performs. Those are invaluable. We could not operate without them. But Danny can correct me if I'm wrong on this. That represents about one-fifth to one-sixth of our operating budget. Uh, the other 
part of our income stream, our revenue stream comes from government grants, fees, things of that nature. We depend uh, on Medicare uh, for a certain amount of our funding for some of the adult services. Uh, we do have tuition and fees involved with our CDC, with our Child Development uh, Center. So when you see the money raised on the telethon, that's great, but it's just a portion of the money that's, that's needed to operate our center. And uh, the center has its challenges, I'll be very honest. In the 15 plus years that I've been on the board, uh, we've had times that uh, I don't think we ever were just stuffed to the gills with money and with funding, but there have been lean times and leaner times. We're a not-for-profit. That doesn't mean we're not interested in having enough money to do things. Uh, but it does mean that there are times that we have to really tighten our belts, look at the bottom line, which, which everyone should do. Uh, we're no different than your household or with your business or what have you. But uh, there are times when funding's down, uh, when the state funds this and they don't fund that, when grants that we used to depend upon are no longer there, there are some challenges. Volunteers play a role in fundraising. Uh, we have the board, which is a group of volunteers. They have done some fundraising when we uh, purchased and developed the new Child Development Center, which is an exceptional facility. I've had experience with meeting with and talking to other Easter Seal uh, facilities and affiliates throughout the country. Our CDC, <coughs> our Child Development Center, is incredible, but it took a tremendous amount of funding to make that a reality and to keep it going, to have two separate campuses now, the one for the children, the one for the adults. Uh, the board has involvement with fundraising. Uh, the Charity League has been invaluable uh, in making certain that we can afford to do certain things. Mm -hmm. So volunteers, you have the board members <coughs> who attend the meetings, who take care of the budget. Uh, the budget process includes the senior staff, those types of things. Um, volunteers also come from those other organizations that I've mentioned, Lions Club members, Charity League members at fundraisers, whether it's barbecue on the river, volunteers who come to work, whether we're having a, a fundraising, a benefit of certain, certain scopes. We've had, you know, shredder type events for your documents. Uh, we've had sales, different things. And, uh, like a lot of organizations, it's a challenge. It, it truly is. Anybody who's interested in volunteering, you know, we welcome them to contact Easter Seals, to contact the facilities. Let us know. The people there, the staff there will get you in touch with a board member who would be more than happy to try to plug you in uh, to the, uh, the volunteers that are on the board. There's always something for sure. someone to do. There's oh, yes. always a place, I know. Yeah, I mean, we've had a lot of people who put a lot of good years in on the board which is a great thing, but there's always the need for new blood, if that's an appropriate way to put it. I understand, uh, yes. There's For new faces and for some fresh ideas, there's, there's always a need for that. Right, right. Um, real quickly, why don't you just give us um, a couple of sentences of what the future probably holds for Easter Seals, what you see, what your vision is, what the board's vision is. We, we have a lot of plans. Uh, we, we've identified that there is a group in the county and in this region, ages 13 to 16, uh, kids with special needs. They're in the school system, but there's really not an after-school program or a summer, summer program for them. So we've met with uh, special ed teachers in the county schools, and we're looking towards developing that program through a partnership with a, another uh, a business, another organization, or we may develop it ourselves. So with the Child Development Center, we're really looking at that. We're looking at a tutoring program, uh, a resource center for our building. Parents who you know just find out that uh, their child has a special need, they need a place to go to be able mm -hmm. to find the resources to guide them through it. Uh, it's very difficult when you don't really know what you're doing, having gone through that. and. I'm sure Chuck had the same experience, so that's really something that's very important to us. At the Adult Center, we're looking towards 
quality of services, uh, trying to do everything that we do the very best we can and try to balance out our programs and to listen to our parents, listen to the individuals and make sure we're providing what they want and what they need. So looking more at the quality there, uh, growth has been coming really at a fast pace, but you know, with the budget constraints that we have, it's, it's really important that we focus on bringing the funds in so we can continue to bring the quality programs that we have. I mean, if you had to, if you had to boil it down to a couple of sentences, a couple of phrases, strong programs, financial stability. I mean, that's the spirit of the times. That's that's where we are. That's where we live. Not just the Easter Seals, just throughout our community, and uh, trying to make those two things mesh to be find good stewards and to provide good services. That's the challenge we have right now, and you know that's what we've been talking about the last couple of years, the last several months. And I have confidence that we're going to get there. I have confidence that you're going to get there too. So as we wrap up here, let's just briefly give the number for Easter Seals. If someone um, wants to volunteer, they want to. I think be it's involved. been running on the screen uh, at times through the program. It's four 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 nine six eight seven. Uh, ask for Stephanie Benjamin and she can connect you with whatever department you're interested in working in and volunteering, uh, whether you have a particular skill or it's just, just general volunteer work. Uh, we're really trying to develop those programs and we really could use the help. So okay. feel free uh, to contact us. Great. Well, we would like to thank you today for joining us here with Danny Carroll and Chuck Walter. Um, we appreciate your time and visiting with us today, and we would invite everyone to tune in next time on Easter, Seal, Easter Seals Today. So thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Today